Okay, it's time for more experiments with the speakers. Because just like any mad scientist, I must experiment. So what's today's experiment? Well, I'm going to be doing more speaker testing. And in fact, here is a speaker that I'm going to test. And this little circuit here is a frequency generator. And it's connected up to the speaker through a 220 ohm resistor and a 1000 microfarad capacitor. It's kind of difficult to see, but there they are. And the speaker is also connected up to the scope so I can see the waveform at the speaker. So now I'll turn the tone generator on. And you might be able to hear already a sound coming out of the speaker. Don't know if you can hear that. I'm holding the microphone right up to it. And if I adjust this variable resistor here, I can adjust the frequency. So that's one thing I can make out of it. But apart from making weird noises, what kind of practical use does this have? Well, with this I can find the center frequency, or rather the free air resonance of the speaker. And this is how I'm going to do it. Okay, you can now see the waveform at the speaker on the scope. And as I adjust the frequency, there will be one frequency where I get the highest voltage which is right about, I'd say right about there. And that, where the voltage is swinging the highest, is the speaker's free air resonant frequency, and my scope has just died. Um, let me just give it a bit of a whack. It usually makes it come back on. There we go. There's a loose connection in there that needs to be sorted out. Anyway, there you can see the waveform there that looks like a W. And if I hold the microphone up to the speaker, that is the resonant frequency of the speaker. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of weight onto the speaker. This is a football shaped eraser. And as you can see, the voltage at the speaker has gone down because doing that, I've changed the resonant frequency of the speaker. And in fact, that's going to actually be much lower, so I'll lower the frequency. And the resonant frequency is right about there. And you might be able to hear that if I hold the microphone up to it. But now when I take the weight away, as you might have guessed, it's changed the resonant frequency and it's back to what it used to be which was there. Now if I put my hand on the speaker, I've changed the resonant frequency again, but this time it's at a much higher frequency, which is right about there. If I take my hand off the speaker, the voltage decreases a bit. If I put my hand back on the speaker, the voltage increases because I'm changing that resonant frequency to whatever the signal generator is doing. So there you go. Now I'm going to put this back to its res I'm going to put this back to its free air resonant frequency, which was just about there. And let's find out what that frequency is. So first what I do is count how many squares long one cycle is. In fact, I think I can get this all on the screen by using that time base. Okay, yeah, that just about fits in there. So I'm just trying to zero that in. And I simply count how many squares long one cycle of the waveform is. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, around about 9.6. And the time base is set to one millisecond per division. So then I simply plug those numbers into this program that I've written in basic. So it was 9.6 squares long. 
and the time base was set to one millisecond, which tells me that the frequency is 104 hertz. Now let's make things a little bit more interesting. I've connected the Dora brand speaker up to the oscillator, so let's see what kind of results we get from this. Well, I can already hear the sound. Don't know if you can, but I'm going to adjust the frequency and we'll see what this resonates at. Oh, there was a right peak, there was a peak right there. Okay, right about there. Okay, I'm just going to adjust the time base on the scope. I'm probably blocking something, but I'm just trying to get this to a position where I can read it better. Right, so let's see what the frequency is. 270 hertz. When I said the ooh, that was actually picking up from the speaker. When I say the 200, ooh, 200. That speaker's really picking that up. Okay, let's see what this driver's free air resonance is. And now I will adjust the frequency. Okay, well there's the free air resonance. I'm going to have to turn that sensitivity down a little bit. Just like I thought, the free air resonance is a bit lower in frequency than it is when it's in the cabinet. So right about there is the speaker's free air resonant frequency, 153 hertz. Okay, here's trouble. I have modified the center speaker. So what I did is I've taken out the tweeter, stuffed lots and lots of fiberglass insulation into this thing, and I found out that there was a high pass filter in this, a 1000, uh, a 100 microfarad capacitor between the speakers and the terminal, so I took that out so there's no high pass filters capacitors in there. The speakers are connected directly to the plug at the back. I'm sure you've seen that I've put a piece of cardboard over where the tweeter was, but it's not completely covering that. So did I make a little mistake there? Did I trim that piece of cardboard too short or something? Well, actually no, because this was intended, because I was playing some music through it, and I put this piece of cardboard in front of the hole, I just moved it about and I found that if I leave a gap just about that amount of space it gets really good bass, it's really get a nice good bass reflex port at that size. So let's hear some music from the reel to reel as always and hear how good this sounds. Yes I know I'm using music from Sonic Adventure. Rougher than the rest of them, the best of them, tougher than leather. You can call me Knuckles. Unlike Sonic, I don't chuckle. I rather flex my muscles. I'm hard as nails. It ain't hard. Let's try to find another bit that I recorded. Almost there. Because this does really good on the lows. Okay, well I don't know how well you heard that, but uh, could hear some nice, good, sort of almost subsonic frequencies coming out of that. And playing them through that speaker is actually the first time I've ever heard them. I don't know how well that came out on the video. I think it's about time to test the resonant frequency of the speaker. Got the second camera set up to film the scope. The scope. I hate the way my voice goes sometimes. And I've got the speaker connected up to my um, signal generator or whatever you want to call it. So I'll just start the camera, yeah, the camera recording. 
Let's see what kind of a result we get. Well, getting a pretty good peak-to-peak -peak waveform. I'm just going to use the knife again. Oh, we've got a really big peak right there. Just have to turn the scope down a little bit so we can um, see it. Of course, it would help if I adjusted the volts per division instead of the time base, wouldn't it? So, we've got quite a peak there. I don't know if that's the base frequency. Let's just... I can hear quite a good low there, although the amplitude in this sort of range doesn't seem to change. But we've got a good resonant peak right there. So let's see what frequency that is. And according to the little calculator program that I wrote, which I know is accurate, the frequency is, as you can see right there, 188 hertz. Okay, just four more tests to do with the oscilloscope and frequency reading and that. So I've got the two rear speakers here, or satellite speakers, or whatever you want to call them. As you can see, one with its original driver in, and the other one with the Dorobrand driver in. And you might remember in the previous video they had capacitors to connect the terminal plate to the speaker. Well, I've taken the capacitors out, and also I have sealed up that hole in both speaker, both speakers, because I really don't think that's going to be necessary. So now I'm going to put the speakers back together, test what their resonant frequency is, and then stick some foam inside and see what we get. Okay, about to test one of the speakers. It might be better to put it on its side, actually. I can get it in the camera shot better that way, because this camera will not zoom out any further than that. But anyway, I'm going to test this speaker here. This is the Technic speaker with its original driver. you you got to laugh at this. I mean, these specifications they put on the back here. That is, if the camera will ever focus in on it. I call this wishful thinking, and I think you will too, once the camera focuses. Now, first of all, some of you said that these speakers might be 16 watts. Well, it clearly says right there, 8 ohms, although this speaker will be a 4 ohm speaker now, since this is the one with the Dora Brown driver in it. But look at these input specifications. 140 watts music, 70 watts DIN. I wouldn't trust these speakers with even 30 watts, let alone 70, and especially not 140. But anyway, let's see what the resonant frequency is. Okay, oscillator is on. Pardon me. Can see a waveform on the scope. Let's crank the frequency up until we get a resonant peak. Right there, I think. Yep, right there. Alright, that speaker's resonant frequency. And actually, I can hear that across the room now. At that at this particular frequency. 109... Sorry, I got interrupted there. Anyway, the frequency is 192 hertz. Not far off from the other speaker. But we'll see if that changes when I stuff some fiberglass in there. Okay, this is the Dora Brand speak. I mean, this is the Technic speaker with the Dora Brand driver in it. Going to do the same experiment. I have absolutely no idea what the resonant frequency is going to be. Well, I haven't changed that frequency since I tested the other speaker, and already I can see that the waveform, the voltage, isn't as high. But that could be simply because this is a four ohm speaker and it's pulling more current. But anyway, let's see what we have. I'm going to adjust the frequency now. No, the resonant frequency, I think, is a little bit lower. 
I think I had it about there for the other speaker. I don't know if you can hear that. Here, it's just a tad lower, just about there. I think just about there. Mum is sneezing away in the background, but there it is, 178 hertz. Slightly lower than the previous speaker. Now we're going to try that with the fiberglass. I think she needs to be put down. Okay, here's the little upgrade to the speakers. Simply putting some fiberglass in there. And yes, I'm going to have to reconnect this one up because I accidentally undisconnected it. But anyway, let's see how they both perform. So here we have the speaker with the Dora Brown driver in it and the insulation. So let's see what we get. Okay, this is the... I don't think that frequency has drifted since last time I tested it. So I'm just going to adjust it and see what the resonant frequency of the speaker is now. You know something? I really don't think that has changed. I'm quite surprised by that. But I tell you, I will tell you something. When we when we when we've got it at that resonant frequency, I can hear that coming out of the speaker. I can hear that sound coming out of the speaker right now better than when it's high or when it's low. When it's like this, it sounds when we're at that resonant frequency, the speaker does actually sound at its loudest. Anyway, I'll just try to fine-tune this and um, see what frequency we actually have here. And I'll come back with the results. Okay, well that really was too close to call, so I'm just going to say that the frequency hasn't changed. Anyway, I've got the other speaker here, the one with its original driver in it, and the insulation. Let's see how this one tests. And I've just realised that the way where I've got my little oscillator positioned, when I overlay the picture of the scope, that's going to block the view, so I have to put that in a different place. Anyway, here we are, same frequency. I'm now going to adjust this, see if it goes up or down. Well, would you believe it? Right, right, I'd say right about there, putting that insulation in has also made this speaker resonate at the same frequency. I have put the other, sp I have connected, yeah, see, it's the other speaker. So that is, that is really, really strange. I think I can safely say that this particular cabinet is tuned to that particular frequency, so I'm not even going to bother measuring it. I can hear that it's the same frequency, and I, and I didn't change the frequency on this between when I was testing this speaker and when I was testing this one. So, yeah, I'm just going to say that 178 hertz is the resonant frequency of these cabinets, regardless of the speaker that's put in. Regardless of whether there's insulation or not, I mean, that certainly will stop some of that resonance, but certainly get rid of the, some of that boxy sound. Anyway, just to be on the safe side, I will measure the frequency that I've got on here. Okay, I may be off by one hertz or two since, you know, tweaking the thing. Can't get the frequency exactly. But we have, that's about, I'd say that's about 5.4, and the previous was about 5.6. But I'm not going to say that this test is an absolute balls-on accurate way of measuring what the frequency is. Just gives you a rough idea. So I can say that that cabinet resonates somewhere between 176 and 180 hertz. And, well, I guess that's just about it for these tests. So anyway, I'm going to leave you with a schematic diagram of the oscillator that I used. I was going to use a sine wave oscillator, but that's... Uh, do have it built, but it only works when it wants to, so I had to go with the other one. So anyway, that's about it for this video. I'm going to get on now and do the other speaker. Then set them up at my computer. 
and I'm going to leave you with the schematic. So, until next time, goodbye. And here is the circuit of the frequency generator, just in case you want to build it yourself. I designed the circuit myself. I've shown two op amps here, even though it only uses one chip, but you can use two separate op amps or one or two op amps in one chip if you want. But anyway, there's the frequency adjust there with that 10k resistor. And there's the speaker to test. And as you can see, it's not a terribly complicated circuit. Doesn't, re doesn't rely on tuning capacitors and coils and things like that. So anyway, I guess that's going to be it for this video. Because it's getting too long already. So until next time, goodbye.